today you join me in the 2018 Nissan Juke Nismo RS. That's right, there is a Nismo RS version of a standard Juke and uh, it's powered by a 1.6 litre turbo petrol engine, the same as you can get in the Qashqai, but this one has something a bit different. It has a big fat old turbocharger strapped to it, which means it creates 218 PS, does 0 to 60 in seven seconds, tops out at roughly 140 miles an hour, and has a limited slip diff in the back, which means that any of the tougher cornering that you're gonna throw at this car, it just hugs the road like a train on rails that isn't on ice. That is one of those trains that just goes around, you get my metaphor. So not only does it have styling upgrades to the outside with the bigger alloys and kind of an aero pack going on, you also have a Nismo tuned exhaust, which has a very fruity note and Nismo's tuned the rest of the car. So you do have better springs, it's lower, it rides firmer. An option, you have these seats, these are Nismo bucket seats. I think they're like a 15 or 1700 pound option, but they hold really well. The gigging car is not exactly what you would expect from a Duke because you see it as a family car, but it's surprising, not necessarily in a good way, but it's not horrific. So join me as I show you what I've had to do. As you can see, based on the rear seat, also an acoustic guitar on the rear seat, but that's annoying, not the end of the world. The issue stems from the fact that while it's quite a deep boot, it's not an overly wide boot because it's not a massively wide car. And so sadly, that's everything I can fit in the back. The geek test, which compromises really of driving to a gig with all my equipment in, having some load in the vehicle and seeing what fuel economy I get in return. Simple. It got decent for what I was expecting. It was in 35, 36 miles per gallon on a run. That's between 60 and 70 miles an hour. And it starts stop traffic and a few boots up to the speed limit every now and then. However, I think it's capable of more. So I'm going to lower my speed limit and I'm gonna drive longer with less intervals a bit later on. The rest of the inside is just a bit more stripped out than you would expect with a Duke, but not massively. You still have all the bits that you want. You have a multi-texture steering wheel, you have Alcantara up here, but the rest of it's pretty much all Duke with the odd bit of you know, carbon fiber going on as well. Aside from that, on the inside, it's a normal Duke. It has a good amount of boot space, it has a good amount of rear space, it has ISO fix, and then you have all these extra bits and pieces which this car has, like blind spot assist, it has a tech pack, so you've got surround view camera. That's pretty much it. But when you get outside, that's where this starts shouting, I'm a bit different. I'm a bit different to my brother Duke. I stand out from the crowd. So starting with this paint job, it's a 700 pound option, seven, 750 pound option, bigger alloys. Everything about this from the outside shouts louder, especially the Nismo exhaust, which shouts quite a lot when you're on the full chat. So if you were looking at a standard Duke, and I know they do come in quite cheap, these start at around 24,000 pounds, with this one, being 26 and a half with a bunch of options, which include these bucket seats, which include your tech pack, your blind spot, and the paint job. Fuel economy test. Actual fuel economy. Going on long distance trip, no weight in the car, 65 miles an hour. What are we gonna get? And like that, 42 miles per gallon. Could have been a little bit better if the traffic hadn't gone, well, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. But generally, 42 miles per gallon, let's put this back on. 42 miles per gallon out of a 1.6, 218 PS. That's pretty frugal. I mean, we're not talking like mega figures, but it's definitely a decent fuel economy to get. From a performance point of view, 
this is definitely performance inspired with the Nismo heritage. This really, really does superbly well on all types of roads. It handles phenomenally well. You can feel everything through the steering. You can feel everything through the suspension. You have real confidence in this vehicle to do a superb job. When it comes to keeping up with the big boys on the motorway, this is the only problem that I had with it in that it's a 1.6 litre. And while it does produce 218 PS, what they've had to do to get that 218 PS is strap a big fat turbo to it. Now, anything with a big fat turbo, when the turbo is engaged, is gonna have bundles of power, which is why this has 218 newton meters of torque out of this 1.6 litre engine. But it's waiting for the turbo to spool. Unless you're in the right gear and you've edged it in so that it, it's ready to go, you're gonna have some serious turbo lag. It's not the end of the world. You just learn to drive to adapt to it. But if you're not ready as well, when the turbo does kick in, you're gonna spin those front tires. So inside, it's quiet, especially considering the size of the tires, especially considering that this is race inspired. It is very, very quiet in here. The navigation is, easy to use it doesn't have apple carplay it's not massively up to date but it does the job all the dials in front of you easy to use exactly as you want you do have a center racing line strip on the steering wheel which means that even when you're not paying attention to the steering wheel you know where the center is visibility is reasonably good however it's typical nissan back there big pillar which means reversing out on that quarter panel can be a bit of a pain uh, so you'll find yourself reversing into the more tricky situations to avoid that happening. And the rest of the car as well is just typically Nissan. The build quality is good, the interior sound comforting and quieting is good. The rear boot space is reasonable but not, not what I would go for myself but has a good amount of luggage capacity with a multitude of different levels that you can put stuff on. The only bit that let me down was the fuel economy because I was expecting a 1.6 to get better. That said, it did reasonably well on a full economy run. What it doesn't do too well on is around town because around town that turbo isn't so much engaged so, you, so you're relying on the engine more to get you around. So as a result around town you'll be lucky if you see 30 miles per gallon. Realistically, you're gonna see 25. As a combined, you're quite likely to see 33 to 35, and on a run anywhere between 36 to 45 in the best case scenario. But you don't buy this car for fuel economy. You buy it because you wanna stand out. And you buy it because it does stand out. You buy it because it gives you performance and you're not like everyone else. So based on that, and based by the fact that this isn't a horrifically expensive car, and that it feels great to drive on every situation, even around town. 10 out of 10, good job.